Hey, I'm so glad you're here. This is beginner's yoga for back bends. And back bends can be a little bit tricky. So we're going to go through some of the actions that we need to include, which is lengthening the sitting bones toward the backs of the knees, pulling the belly in and up, and widening the collarbones among a couple of other things. So make sure that you have two blocks handy and grab your yoga mat and something comfortable to wear. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell because we're making all kinds of beginners videos and I don't want you to miss any of them because when you practice yoga, you feel better. So let's get started. Now let's begin sitting up nice and tall. Close your eyes for a moment, take a couple of long breaths. And then bring your hands together in front of your heart. We'll start with an affirmation today. I am the power and authority in my life. I am free to be me. We're going to grab our blocks and we're going to put one block right at the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. So it's right about the middle of the back. Put that on the lowest height. Take your other block on the middle height. Lean back so that the bottom block is right about the middle of your back and the top block rests, your head will rest on it. Keep your knees bent and just bring your arms along your sides. It should feel comfortable. The upper back block. If it doesn't feel like it's getting into the upper back comfortably, then move it around a little bit. If you would like a bigger opening in the upper back, since we're working on back bends today, we have to start coming into this gentle back bend to begin. You can always put the blocks up a notch higher. Otherwise, stay with this lower version, especially if this is new to you. The thoracic spine, where the block is in the upper back, naturally curves in the other direction. So we're gently bringing it into a back bend. As you're here, start to breathe longer, smooth breaths. It's a little rhythm of inhale for a count of four. Exhale for the count of four. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Inhaling four, three, two, one. Exhaling four, three, two, one. Walk your heels in a little closer to your hips. Roll to your right side very carefully and use your left hand to press up and then slide your blocks out of your way. And just move them just toward the front of the mat. We'll use them toward the front of the mat in a bit. Then roll yourself forward onto your hands and knees. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Keep your toes tucking under. Inhale, bring your chest forward. So right from the place where that block was in the upper back, move from there. Exhale, round the back. So round into that place. Inhale, make a little back bend in the upper back. Pull your shoulder blades towards your waist and lift your belly gently. Exhale, now round your back, pull your ribs and belly in a lot. And again, inhale, widen across your collarbones, bring your chest forward, lift your chin and tailbone just a little. And then exhale, round the back, chin toward chest. Inhale, come to neutral. Get those blocks again, bring them by the front of the mat and put your hands on the blocks, the medium or the high height. Bring your right foot forward, make sure your right knee is over the ankle. So medium or high height, but pull your right hip back, lengthen your tailbone down and pull your belly in. Fingertips on the blocks at any height. We're gonna sink forward here, keeping the back toes tucking under and the right hip pulling back to stretch out the left thigh and the left hip flexor. So as you sink your hips forward, keep pulling your ribs and belly in and pulling that right hip back and keep the knee over the ankle on the right leg. Lift your chest, widen your collarbones, sink in, and then let's release it back to table. Now we'll step the left foot up by the left hand, make sure that knee is over the ankle. 
put the blocks up any height, tuck your back toes under. Now we'll pull the left hip back, drop the butt down, pull the belly in, and sink forward. As you're sinking forward, continue to pull the left hip back, continue to lift your belly. And you can have those blocks on any height, any height that works for you, as long as your spine is long. We don't want to be rounding in the upper back. We want the collarbones to widen and the shoulder heads to pull back a little. Keep sinking forward with the hips. We can stretch out the back thigh and hip flexor. Gently, of course. Steady breathing always. And keep that knee over ankle. We'll release that. And then you can slide the blocks out of your way again, but keep them handy. And take your hips back to your heels in child's pose. The head can rest on the mat or arms and ears in line. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Press into the base of your fingers as you lift up through your forearms. And try and lift your inner elbows forward. So come up onto the knees, turn the inner elbows forward gently, lift into down dog. Then start to bend the right knee and then the left knee as you warm up your hamstrings and your calves, your ankles. Bend both knees, stretch your spine way back, way back. Pull the belly in and then start to straighten the legs as much as they will. Arms are shoulders distance apart, feet are hips width. Firm the legs, pull the belly in and up to firm it too. Inhale, come forward into plank, top of a push-up. Knees can be up or down. Shift your shoulders forward. Exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Then slide your hands by your low ribs. Roll your shoulders away from the mat and lengthen your butt to your heels. Inhale, peel the chest up for low cobra. Press all ten toenails into the floor. And then lower back down. Now we're going to interlace the fingers or hook the thumbs at the low back. Pull the belly away from the floor, press the pubic bone down gently, roll the shoulders away from the floor. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale there, inhale, lift the legs from the inner thighs, as if you're holding a block between the inner thighs. Keep the crown of the head lengthening forward, and then release. You can rest your forehead down on the mat or on your hands, or you can take one ear down to the mat. Let everything go. And then slide the hands back again. Hook the other thumb on top or if you're interlacing the other pinky on top. Lift the belly, pubic bone down. Roll the shoulders away from the mat and lift everything up. Widen your chest and collarbones. Keep the back of your neck long. Keep the belly lifted, pressing the pubic bone down into the floor just gently. Inner thighs lift toward the ceiling. Release and rest. Breathe here. Slide your hands by your low ribs. We'll inhale for a little cobra. Roll the shoulder heads back. Pull the belly in. Or you can lift into up dog with thighs and knees off the floor if that works for you. Then drop to the knees. Tuck the toes for downward facing dog. Stretching back arms and ears in line. Spread your fingers, press into your, the base of your fingers, lift up through your forearms. Look forward, begin to walk your feet toward the hands and then down onto your knees. If your knees are sensitive, get something to pad them up like a pillow or a folded blanket. Grab a block and hold it between your inner thighs, gently. Bring your hands so you want your... You're going to want your lengthen your tailbone toward the backs of the knees, your hip bones lifting up, hands on low ribs, roll shoulders back, and then just begin to gently lean back any amount. But keep that length in the low back, pull the belly in, squeeze the block, come up both shoulders at the same time. We're going to do it again. So widen the chest, lengthen your sitting bones toward the backs of your knees, and lift your hip bones toward your lower ribs. The block will help your inner thighs to spin them back like we want them to. So we're going to roll the shoulders back, begin to lean back. You might find this feels a little scary because we're not used to being so vulnerable with such an open chest. But breathe into the chest, squeeze the block, come up both shoulders at the same time. This is camel pose, ustrasana. I'm going to do it one more time. So keep holding the block, 
lengthen your sitting bones toward the backs of the knees, roll the shoulders back, pull the ribs and belly in as you start to lean back. Keep your sitting bones and your buns lengthening toward the backs of the knees. And then imagine there's a string pulling on your chest to lift it up toward the sky. Squeeze the block to come up and then release the block and bring your hands down onto the mat. Walk your heels or your knees back so your wrists are in front of your shoulders and then tuck your toes again for downward dog. Now we wanna really stretch out the back here. So if you need to bend your knees to do that, then please do. All arms and ears are in line. Pull the ribs and belly in gently and firm the legs. Now looking forward, make your way into plank pose, top of a push-up. Knees can be up or down, always your choice. Chest is moving forward, sitting bones are lengthening toward backs of knees. Hug your elbows in and lower all the way to the floor. Then we're going to come into sphinx pose. So take your forearms onto the floor with your elbows underneath your shoulders. First let your shoulders hike up by your ears and then pull them back and down and lift up. Make sure your elbows are right below your shoulders. Roll the shoulder heads back, lengthen butt to backs of knees and pull in your belly. And then lower down. Breathe here, let it go. So all of these back bends will get the blood flowing into the heart and also the energy flowing throughout the body. Now we're gonna take your right forearm, make it parallel with the front of the mat. Lift your left foot up toward the sky. If it seems like you can reach back with your left hand for the foot, then do it. Otherwise, just keep it bent. If you've got the foot, you can lift it up and press it back gently, but pull your belly in away from the floor and lengthen your butt to the backs of the knees and then rest. Letting it go again. So it's important to keep length in the lower back, keep the belly lifted in our back bends. Now we'll come up onto the forearms again. And then left forearms parallel at the front of the mat. Bend the right knee. Now you can just keep the right knee bent, or if it seems like you can reach back for it, Hold the foot, then grab it. You could also use a strap here if you wish. And if you do have the foot, you can work on lifting the leg up away from the floor and then pressing that foot back toward the back of the mat to really stretch out the fronts of the thighs and the hip flexors. But pull the belly in and keep lengthening through the lower back. Release it and let it go. Notice how your heart is probably beating a little bit faster. Slide your hands by your low ribs, press up to plank, knees up or down, and then take your hips all the way back to your heels. You can rest your head on your hands, or if you can extend the arms, and then start to press, really press into the base of the fingers so that your sitting bones really extend toward the heels and you stretch out your whole back. So a little release of the back after our back bending. And then relax in your child's pose any way you like. Now make your way up onto your knees. Take your hips off to one side. Extend the legs in front of you. Sit up nice and tall. Now, if it's hard to sit up tall and you're finding your lower back especially is rounding, then you wanna sit up on something. So I just have a block today, that's all I brought. So if you sit on the edge of a block or a folded blanket or a pillow, that will give you the length that your lower back needs to help you sit up nice and tall, which is super important. I'm not gonna sit on the block because I have a, a different situation. My lower back likes to to arch a lot. So for me, sitting on the block doesn't help me at all. <laughs> so we're going to bend the right knee, put the right sole of the foot and into the left thigh. If your right knee is up, pat it up with your block. Reach both arms up, inhale. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips for a forward fold. Keep your left toes pointed up toward the sky or toward the ceiling. You can hold it on to the leg any place. If you have a yoga strap, you can strap it around the ball of your left 
or sorry, the ball of your right foot and keep it there. Oh no, that is your left foot. Whichever leg is straight. <laughs> and inhale, come on up. Yikes. Extend both legs. Oh, doggy time. Extend both legs in front. Now we'll bend the left knee. Left sole of the foot to the right inner thigh. And then you can prop up that knee, especially if it doesn't sit down. If it sticks up, prop it up. Reach the arms up. Exhale, hinge from your hips to come forward. So remember, we always want length in the spine. We're not rounding it. So instead of thinking head to knee, think belly to thigh. Bring your hands anywhere along the leg. As long as you feel a stretch, that is good. doesn't ever, 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 ever matter how deep you go in to a stretch. In fact, you can overstretch and that's not good either. So we have to find our balance. Make sure the leg is firm. So as you pull the toes back on the straight leg, it keeps the leg nice and firm. Come on up. Release. And then bend your knees and lean onto your back. Lay all the way down. Hug both knees into your chest. Give them a nice hug. Rock a little bit side to side. Give your low back a nice massage after those back bends. Then we're going to bend the knees. Take them toward the armpits. Hold on to the ankles or the calves or hold the little toe sides of the feet. Now see if you can lengthen your sitting bones toward the floor as you get into your hips a little bit with this one, it's called happy baby pose. It's like a happy little baby. <laughs> you can even rock a little side to side. Long, smooth breaths, and then release that. Take your hips over to the left, drop your knees over to the right. Look over your left shoulder. It's just a simple twist. So good for so many things. Nice, long, smooth breath here. And then come back to center. Bring your knees to center. Take your hips over to the right, knees to the left. Look over your right shoulder. And breathe here. Doing the other side. Try and gently turn your belly up toward the ceiling so you get a nice twist through your spine. Come back to center. Hug your knees in one last time. Lengthen your sitting bones toward the floor and then take your feet down. Lengthen butt toward backs of knees and shoulder blades toward the waist. Let your feet flop open, arms by your sides, and rest. Our quote is Israel, Israel more of your. The bird dares to break the shell, then the shell breaks open and the bird can fly openly. This is the simplest principle of success. You dream, you dare, and you fly. Rest. I'll be back in a moment. Begin to take some longer breaths. And start to reawaken your body by gently moving your fingers and your toes. And then circle your wrists and your ankles. And inhale, extend the arms overhead for a long stretch. Bend your knees and roll yourself to your right side. Pause a moment here to thank yourself for taking your practice today. Slowly make your way up. Cross at the shins. We'll bring the hands together. Let's bring our hands to the forehead, reminding us to have clear and loving thoughts. 
our hands to the heart center, reminding us to have clear and loving intentions. And our hands to the mouth, reminding us to have clear and loving communications. We'll send this wonderful energy that we created today out to all beings everywhere. Namaste. Great job, Yogi. You're all open and stretched, and I bet you feel better. If you want more yoga classes every day, visit fightmasteryoga.com and click today's yoga class. For beginner's videos, click the beginner's start here section and practice every day. So when you practice yoga, you feel better. I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye.